What is going on everybody and welcome to the newly released Persona Q Shadow of the Labyrinth. This game is exclusive to the Nintendo 3DS and it releases on Friday. I was actually lucky enough to get this game a day early, thanks to eBay of course. They actually ship these out so you receive it a day early, it actually says in the, in the description. So that really made my mind up for me. So usually I actually get my games off Amazon or my local game store. But this time, obviously I'm going to have to go for eBay because it does come here a day early. And... I'm a huge fan of the Persona games, I actually just started Persona 3 Portable on my PS Vita today just to kind of refresh my memory and get a feel for the characters once again as I, am, as I did know I was going to be starting this game today. So I guess I'm not going to waste any more time, I'm going to dive into the game. Hopefully you guys are excited, if so then please let me know down in the comments below and I'll bring some of these videos to you a lot more quicker. But for now guys we're about to begin, I've actually checked out the intro for myself just to make sure there is one. And I really enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys you will enjoy it also. It's about to appear in a moment. So I'll let you guys enjoy it. Alright, and there we have it. Don't know about you guys, but I really did enjoy that. And one of the things I really do enjoy about Persona games is their soundtrack. They always deliver in that department, in my opinion. And I usually actually end up downloading all the songs to my iTunes, but anyway, that's a story for another day. So we're about to begin things now, checking add-on content. So I actually have no idea about any of this add-on content, I'm not really sure what to expect there. But it's really cool that they have the option. Now we'll start a new game, there's not really much else to do other than start a new game, so choose a story to experience. Welcome to the world of Persona Q. It is up to you to choose the protagonist of this story. Your choice of, of protagonist will affect how the story develops. Alright, so we have the option here of choosing the protagonist from Persona 3, a second year student, and from Persona 4, another high school student, from and is the leader of the investigation team working to solve murders in Inaba. Now, I'll probably go with Persona 4 here mainly because I just started Persona 3 today and I actually haven't played the portable version before so that's going to be new to me even though the story is the same it's just going to be a new feel to me so we'll go with Persona 4 here and what you guys may notice is actually the change in like detail of the characters that like the animation has changed but the story will be centered around companions of Persona 4 so maybe we will not be seeing any of uh, the Persona 3 members possibly I really don't know but if you guys do want to see them then I'll do another video showing those guys off or the beginning of the Persona 3 story so anyway it's cool where you can actually choose two paths because it does give you like another playthrough so a lot of hours can be put into this game so we'll enter his name now there's a chance that the protagonist's name will be seen by others through data exchange i.e. street pass possibly please do not use names that will offend others or include personal information alright I got it alright so I guess we'll just go with his original name from the Persona 4 game so I believe it's spelt like this narrow wait we don't want to go caps there I think it's a U here I think car oh wait doesn't even want to fit does it so it just spells Naruka so I guess we'll try and squeeze some of his name 
in here and see how this works out for us. So I won't start this with a capital. Naru Alright, we'll go with that. Sorry about this, guys. We'll, we'll go with that. Probably going to look weird, but we'll, we'll go with that anyway. So let's begin. Yep, it's definitely acceptable. Let's get to it. And difficulty. I'll probably just go with normal here because I don't want to really frustrate myself in this video. So, we'll start at normal. And relax and enjoy the story. Fate leads the winning and drags along the reluctant. Welcome to the Velvet Room. Welcome to the Velvet Room. All right. <laughs> okay. This place exists between dream and reality, mind and matter. It seems you have quite a unique fate after all. The cards are whispering to me. They say that a curious incident is awaiting you. Perhaps you have a premonition of it already. Do you know who your threads of destiny will intertwine with? Margaret's words bring back memories of a certain person's words. Wow, wow. you're strong. You're strong. Could this be the fate that Margaret is talking about? If that's the case, the person's name is... Enter his name. Alright, there's a chance that his name will be... Okay, we know we know the deal. So, he hasn't really been given an official name, I've heard anyway. So we'll go with his name, which is used in Persona 3, and I think this should hopefully fit in. Alright, so of course if this is the protagonist of Persona 3, I actually just use his. I had to actually look up his name today just to name him for my new playthrough. So here we go. This one should hopefully fit in. Well, the first does. Let's hope his last name does. Arasato, I believe it is. And it's not going to fit in. So just my luck once again. So we'll leave it as that. It's close enough anyway. And yep, it's definitely acceptable. So let's get to it. I see. As I thought, you sense something as well. I look forward to the story that the strands of fate will weave. Well then, until we meet again. Right, October 30th, 2011. The morning of the final day of Yazagami High's Culture Festival. At the Dojima home, where you oh where you Narukami is staying, that's gonna like distract me now. Nanako, all done. Nanako jo Dojima, a uh, younger cousin in the first grade, she does the housework after her mother died. The table is set, and the breakfast Nanako prepared is already waiting for you. My teacher said you need to eat well in the morning. I just know how to cook eggs, so I need sunny side up eggs and a rolled omelet. Huh? The rolled omelet turned black. <laughs> yeah, we'll be nice to her. It's good even if it's burnt. Gotta love Nanaka. No, the burnt parts are bad for you. Okay. <laughs> Dad says he likes it burned too, but it's still bad to eat. Well. Thanks for the food. I don't think it's bad, I just don't think it's as nutritious. The eggs are yummy. <laughs> Chickens are amazing. Wait, I thought we was eating eggs. Huh? Someone's here. Yo. Kanji Tatsumi 
a first year underclassman of Yuna. He can be very brave, but also very impulsive. Kanji came to visit this morning. Sorry to show up this early in the morning, man. The old hag wouldn't shut up about me taking this to you. I thought it'd be a pain to lug all around school, so uh, I, I brought it now. Uh, you, you don't want it, huh? Kanji looks a little embarrassed as he produces a large bento box. Oh, we're having breakfast right now. Let's eat it. Huh? Uh, I don't know if you'd li like it, Nanako-chan. <laughs> Kanji spreads the food he brought out on the table. Chikuzen ni korba maki, some simmered dishes and more simmered dishes. Sorry, it's all brown and stuff. It's great! Your mom is a really good cook. You think so? Cool! <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Actually, I, I cooked part of that. It's uh that that simmered one. <laughs> you can cook? You can make knit dolls too. <laughs> you really can do anything. When I get bigger, I want to be like you, Mr. Um, Kanji. That would happen. I'll cheer you on. Um, I, I don't know. I'll cheer you on. What are you cheering her on for? Seriously, what are you gonna do if Nanako chan does turn out like me? Hey, I don't know what to say. You hear something that sounds like the ringing of bells. Oh, you're gonna be late, big bro. There's a festival at school today, right? It looks like. It looks, it looks as though Nanako didn't hear the sound. Whoa, look at the time. Uh, I guess we'll have to use my secret passage. There's a hole in the school fence. The shortcut of the classrooms will let you avoid the teachers. Uh, Kanji, uh, you're a delinquent. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> That's so cool. Cool? Uh, not really. I mean, Senpai, come on, stop glaring at me! We shouldn't really have cheered her on, should we? Can't turn a sweet girl into something like Kanji. Well, we did see a different side of Kanji right there, which was pretty cool. I never knew he actually cooked. Anyway, a little past two in the afternoon. The beauty pe pageant and other events have ended, and the coach festival is coming to a close. The classes display the group date cafe. There are no customers. Last day of the culture festival, but there's no one here at all. Yosuke, Yuna's classmate and a good friend. His father manages the Junes store. I hear all the other classes are in full swing. Chie, Narakami's classmate and a girl who loves both kung fu and meat. Oh, and I was kind of interested in this group date. I wonder why it's not catching on. And my personal favorite, Yukiko. A classmate of Narukami also, and the only child to, of the owner of a long-standing Amagi Inn. Man, I'm glad it isn't. There's nowhere else to rest. I like it. No one's taking pictures of me or making awkward small talk. Great plan, Yosuke-senpai. Rise, Rise-chan, a first-year student with nationwide celebrity as an idol. Voshi is currently on leave. If that was my plan, then I would have suggested a quiet zone to begin with. There's one last event to finish off this festival later today, right? I wonder what it's going to be about. I heard it'll be a karaoke booth with no sign-ups needed. Wouldn't it draw too large a crowd if you sang Risei song? Naoto, a first-year student and Norikami's underclassman, a brilliant detective who aids police. Second grand victory after the cross-dressing pageant. And Teddy, a strange creature from the from the world inside the TV. He is currently living in Yosuke's closet. When I grow up, I'm gonna be a singing, dancing magician. Do you wanna see my magic trick? Huh? How about it? Well, if you insist. A one, a two, and a three. Ta-da! 
<laughs> My transformation into a gorgeous prince is complete. All you did was take off your costume. So, what did you think, Sensei? Were you shocked and amazed? I'm used to it. Yep, I'm definitely used to that. I'm sorry, buddy. Oh my! Have you lost that love and feeling? My heart burns stronger when I get the cold shoulder, Senpai. So if you guys were wondering what's on the touch screen, there's not really too much here. I'm actually just um, progressing with the text using the touch screen, and that's pretty much it. But that sound. Hmm. What was that just now? It sounded like bells. Hmm. It was different than our usual school bell, though, huh? Oh! What is it? I heard that the Kinjiro Ninomiya statue runs around the schoolyard in the middle of the night. Uh... What does that have to do with anything? Besides, we don't have one of those statues here. It's a common story as one of the school's seven horrors. Does this school have its own urban legends? Like I said, the statue runs around the... We don't have one! Oh, but the second one's impressive, too. The eyes of the Mozart bust in the music room. Glow. All they do is glow? Well, all the statue does is run. Again, we have no statue. The third one is, if you write your wish in the log book at the nurse's office, it'll come true. Isn't that just a superstition? Yukiko, Yukiko continues telling our story. Okay, but here's the main point I wanted to get to. So you did have a point. Can you guess the sixth one? Whoever hears the bell of the clock tower to the end. Uh, we don't have a clock tower either. Although, as I recall, supposedly there was one here once. I heard it from the principal before. You know, I think you're right. But I'm pretty sure that was before we were in grade school. So, what happens when you hear the bells to the end? You die. Dude, that's such a cliche. You breathe your last? Rephrasing it doesn't make it better. <laughs> okay, enough about that story. That bell probably means the post-festival event starting. Let's go! GA quickly leaves the classroom. anyone our age still gets creeped out by the seven horror stuff. Uh, are you scared? Hmm? No, not at all. In the hallways of Yazagami High, Margaret, a resident of the Velvet Room, is standing here in the bustling wall. Hall, sorry. Ah. Uh. Why is she here? I've been allowed to have a fortune-telling booth here. It's just a way to pass the time. That's a little weird. H hey, Senpai, who's this beautiful lady? You never told me about her. Me neither. I can't let this pass. You explain that she is a resident of the Velvet Room, where your persona fusions are performed. Oh, you mean that place you've mentioned before? That's the one, Chia. But didn't you say the owner had a long nose? Does it stretch? <laughs> That's the wrong person, Yukika. It doesn't stretch, and he was not referring to myself. I'd be curious to know what you told your friends about us. Oh, sorry, um, we're... There's no need for introductions. I know about all of you. That aside, did you hear that sound earlier? What sound? Oh, right. We thought the post-festival thing was starting. I see. So you did hear it. That sound did not come from reality. I heard it from my fortune-telling booth, after all. From your booth? Though it has no master, the fortune-telling room is a simplified velvet room. The velvet room is inseparable from a guest's fate. Absolutely nothing meaningless happens there. So then, if a sound was heard there, it was by necessity? Maybe you just dropped a bell or something? Indeed, something is happening. Or rather, something is about to begin. She ignored me. 
Well, I guess all we can do is check out this fortune-telling booth. This velvet room's where they've been helping you out all this time, right? You raise an interesting point. If you all heard the sound, then it must be related to all of you. Will you please follow me? It's this way. Margaret began leading the way. So, uh, hey, Yukiko, what's the seventh story? Well, if you've heard the six leading up to it, supposedly something will appear. What? That sounds like the hundred stories. Wah! What's wrong? Oh, uh, there was a spider crawling by my feet and... Huh? It's gone. A spider? It must have been my imagination. Come on, let's go. But who way in front of the fortune telling booth? It's through here. Please be careful. As I feared, it is somewhat unstable. Unstable? Time. It's unstable. Um, let's go in, Senpai. You step into the darkness within the fortune telling booth and that is where we're going to end things there guys. I hope you guys are enjoying the game so far. If you do want to see more then just let me know down in the comments below. Anyhow I probably will do a follow up video on this because I'm very excited to see what is inside this telling booth. Until next time guys have a great day. Be sure to hit that thumbs up if you did enjoy and I hope to see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching guys.